And what I suggest you do, you're probably wondering why there are three chairs here. Yeah? You take three chairs and three pieces of A4 and you sit in the first chair and you write down what it is that you want. What is your world? What do you want from that call? And then you move into the second chair, which is the person you're calling, and you ask yourself, if I was listening to me, how well would I respond to that call? And then you can move into the third chair, which is an observer chair, or you can call them wise owl, and ask yourself, if I was watching this dynamic between this, and this person this person and myself, how likely is David to get the outcomes that he wants? And if you think I'm completely off the wall, if you think I'm completely off the wall, record your calls. Record your calls. Because if you record your calls, what will happen is that you will automatically get those three positions. You will be able to hear the call from your world. You'll be able to hear the call from the client perspective, client's perspective, and you'll be able to take a neutral observer position. Yeah? How do you do it? Recording your calls. Do you tell them this again? I'd like to record this in That's quite a lot. <laughs> That's, okay, that's, there's, a, there's a long answer to, to that. Do you want to, can I park that to the end? Yeah, that's a good question, but I'll, 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 I'll answer that at the end. So, why do I do that? Why do I do that, why do I do that process? And now I kind of do it in, in, instinctively. But once you get it into the muscle, what happens is that you will get what I call a kinesthetic. You'll get a feeling of when you've got it right. So when you do your research right, and you've got your valid business reason, I get this kind of excited feeling at the top of my chest. That's my indication. That's my evidence. When I get it wrong, I get this lumpy, nervous feeling. I don't want to make this call. It won't work. Okay? And the reason I'm spending so much time talking about this is this is the stuff that stops you making it, and this is the stuff that in most cases causes calls to fail because people don't prepare. They don't do the mental preparation. Okay? Helpful? How are we with our calls now? Let me just check in. Has the, has the score going up? Good. Excellent. Right. Let me look at some of the other blocks, the, the barriers within, within the call route. Gatekeepers. How many people are worried and have problems with gatekeepers? Right. Lots of you. How do we deal with gatekeepers? The old conventional wisdom was to get past the gatekeeper. It was all this kind of pushing and, you know, and I'm, I'm Joe and it's a personal call and all that kind of stuff, which, of course, just annoys people and doesn't work. So the best thing to do with a gatekeeper is actually to meet them in their world, which is, you want to block me? That's great. Please block me and you let me in when it's the right time. Okay? So let them be that your guide. Let them do the heavy lifting. So let them find, do all the work. The alternative is just so tiring. Okay? And the way I do it, I'll explain. The way I do it is that I tend to go to the top. So I want to find out who the right person is, go to the top of the organization, usually the chairman, chief executive secretary, and having done my valid business reason research, just like Heather was telling you to do, present that, say, hi, it's David Fassenstein here. I'm calling you about the second round of funding. Want to find out who's responsible for that part of the business. Could you tell me who it is? Their phone details, email details, PA's details, all that kind of stuff. And then I ring up, and you've got a choice. You can do two things. If you like the phone, you can call them up and say, now's not a good time, given your name, could we set up a 15 to 20 minute telephone meeting? Or if you prefer, if you feel more comfortable, work through the PAs and do the same. 
And those of you who want to build up a steady pipeline of people to talk to, do it like that. And that's the easy way. Okay? How's the temperature now? Is it still going up? Can I just confirm something? Yeah, sure. The gatekeeper, you're essentially saying two gatekeepers, so that is the person on the suit. Yeah, that can be, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You can work through the gatekeeper, absolutely, yes. Yes, absolutely. And then what you're doing, that whole kind of stuff is, what am I going to say? How am I going to get it out? All that kind of, that anxiety, you don't have to worry about. Because you've got your 15 minutes, you'll have your agenda, you'll work through your per perceptual positions exercise, you'll do all your prep, so that when you do do the call, you're in the right, relaxed, focused way to be able to do it. Is that helpful? Yeah. What if you get to the person you, as you said, you want to get to? Yeah. And you go to the street from there. Yeah. And they say, no, let's go there. That's fine. So as part of your preparation, be prepared to go for it. That's fine. If they give you permission, fantastic. Then run with it. But in most cases, they won't. That's why I say. But if they do, fantastic. Then you, you've got an opportunity. You've caught them at the right time. They're saying, yeah, let's talk. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Voicemail. How many of you? Yeah. Yes. In, in a lot of big organizations now, the gatekeeper role is even more severe in the um, company's policy of not giving that name to right. How do you deal with that? That's a great question. Um, then it's a bit back to your research then. It's seeing how much you can use Heather's stuff, her, all her research tools that we were showing earlier, to find out names that are closest to the person that you think might be able to help you. And then you call them, you do the same thing, same strategy, say, it's regarding X, with just like 10 minutes. And they may say, okay, well, so how can I help you? What's this? And then you get your name. Does that, or they'll pass you. They, they tend to be, this is a very good question, those kind of no-name stuff tends to be at switchboard. It tends to be at the kind of, the bit where there's the most traffic. No? No, there's certainly one of the big I've worked for it goes right through all the layers. Does it? And, and we were told as such never to give the name. Okay, if that's the case, then you just throw your hands up and, <laughs> and just, yeah, it's just, it's just then call people and, and, and just try and work with them. If that's, yeah. Yeah, if there's a complete block, you just leave it and then, and then move on to another one. Yeah. yeah. Good. Voicemail. How many of you are absolutely tortured by voicemail? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, same thing. Most voicemail messages that you get are, guess what, all about them and their product. Them about certain. So if you leave a message which is about them and their business, and you use the referral thing, so I'm calling further to speaking to Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chief Executive Secretary, it's with reference to, please call me back, and here's the thing. Repeat your telephone number. It is such an obvious point. How many times do you get a voicemail that says, Hi, it's Jonathan Bill, call me back on 07444 for the river. <laughs> yeah? And of course, are you going to call them back now? Okay. Third block. Visual people. How many of you here are very visual? Whoa. Gosh. Okay. So this applies to nearly all of you, or lots of you. Those of you who are visual, and am I, am I right, a lot of you who are visual aren't that comfortable with the phone? Yep, okay. Give yourself some visual compensation. So, the person you're going to talk to, find a photograph of them. So you, <laughs> so you are actually, in your mind's eye, you are talking to a person, okay? Secondly, if you can't find a photograph, Create a picture of them in your mind so that you're not talking to a disembodied voice. Okay? And what you'll notice is that actually makes you feel better. When you have your telephone meetings, make sure you have documentation which will honour your visual processing. So as you go through the call, there is something visual that you can look at. Okay? 
Anything else to say about visual? <coughs> yeah, I think that's it. Yes? Okay. Yeah. Are you suggesting when you do the call, you send down the visual to the if they're visual, absolutely, yes. And what you can do, what a great question is, is when you, when you are, just before you run your call, your 15 minutes, call the PA, and this, is, this comes out this morning's session, is ask them how their boss processes. Do they like to see something? Is it what they hear? Is it what they see? And are they a detailed person or are they a big chunk person? Sorry, are they, yes, are they detailed or big chunk? Yeah. So, where are we? Yes? I think the reality is that, depending on how the, how the conversation goes, you can Google that individual and get a picture. And if they're interested in you at all, they will Google you. So, if you can see that you're both in a visual anyway, you've got a LinkedIn or something, you've got a photograph, you know, it's going to be happening. So, it's quite easy to actually, you know, if these happen, people will Google you if they're actually selling something yourself or. Sorry, you've, you've lost me on your question. Well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just making the point, but the visual point you're making is that, A, you can Google somebody. Yes. And you usually pick them up on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. Yep. And so you'll get a picture. But they will Google you as well. They will actually, if they're interested in you, they may well actually get you up on the screen if you're, depending on what your proposition is. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, of course. Yeah. So, 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 so the level of communication is moving beyond the <coughs> conversation. They're actually looking at you research. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I should have the questions. <laughs> if you got to the point of getting a slot in their diary, yes. Like yes. Yeah. isn't it better to go in person and be able to look them in the eye and read the body language? Lovely question. Thank you for that. Um, the answer is a good old consultancy. It depends. The thing is about the phone is that if you can... If you're prospecting, if you're doing lots of prospecting, um, and your time is very precious, as indeed your, your time and comes with that cost, the more you can do over the phone, the better. So if you feel that you're at a point where you're going to close the business, by all means go to the, to the meeting. But if you're in qualifying stage, where you've still got a lot of boxes that you need to tick, then my counsel would be do it over the phone. And that's a lovely question because it gives you an op opportunity to say just this. Those of you who are very visual, and I take it you're visual, are you? More of it, hands up, those of you who are visual? Right, great tip for you. Those of you who feel that you have to see the body language of the person that you want to engage with or work with as a potential client, exchange that for tonal cues. So focus on their tone. So... As from now, as you have your telephone conversations, the stuff that you get, the visual cues, like this gentleman, um, <laughs> the visual cues that you get when people, people want to know more, they're not quite sure, all that kind of stuff, you will also get in, in tonal cues. And people say, oh, yeah, that's great. It's not really great. Okay, so what's, what, so you can, and the very, very um, powerful thing about this is relating to that. In your voice, I noted there was some doubt. Can you play back 